So when you think of sort of digital health, often people think about you know, wearables. We talked about uh, the explosion of sort of, of widgets. But there are other uh, elements that can be informative to health and medicine, including mental health. And a few years ago, I was lucky to meet uh, Yuval Moore, the CEO of, of Beyond Verbal. And full disclosure, I'm actually one of the early advisors. And they did some incredible work using uh, voice as a biomarker for emotion, uh, picking that up in, in real time. You can try their, uh, their, uh, their app for that. Um, but lately, they've been uh, doing some collaborations, as you hear, with Mayo Clinic. And so um, I'm uh, really pleased to bring out both Yuval Mar, the CEO of Beyond Verbal, and Amir Lerman, who is the director of cardiovascular research at Mayo Clinic, to take us to the next level of where voice uh, can inform the future of health and medicine. So Amir and Yuval, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you very much and uh, good morning. As uh, Daniel said, I'm a cardiologist at the Mayo Clinic, which is probably one of the coldest places on earth if you've ever been there, uh, which will lead to what, what is our challenge and what we want to do. Um, my partner is... <coughs> my, uh, uh, my name is Yuval Moore, and I'm uh, one of the co-founders and CEO of Beyond Verbal. Okay. So what is our challenge as health providers and as physicians? Uh, we need to provide equalization and standardization of healthcare throughout, not only domestically, but also internationally which means that we would like to provide the care and the signal from the patient to us, rather than require the patient to travel all this distance to provide them with, a, uh, uh, with, with their medical care. And th this map just described the inequality and the number of physicians per population throughout the world. And you can see there are areas uh, in China, in India, in Africa, they don't have physicians in these places. And they will not be able to train enough physicians to give to take care of their patient. So we have a target that we cannot now ask or require from the patient to come to us, and we need to reach out domestically and internationally uh, for this patient. So why cardiovascular disease? Uh, of course, I have a conflict of interest because I'm a cardiologist, but in general, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the Western society and soon to be uh, worldwide. Now, what happened in cardiovascular disease is interesting and give an uh, opportunity for new technology. In the past, people die early from cardiovascular disease, from heart attack, sudden death. Because of our success in reducing mortality from the first event, cardiovascular disease turned into a chronic disease. It transitioned to a disease that people live with that for many, many years. And our job is to maintain their health and on the other hand, to do early detection. As you can see in the graph on the left, at any specific day, there are more women dying from cardiovascular disease in men. And if you do a survey of women, they still, majority of them think that the major cause of death in women is cancer, which is wrong because their survival, most of the death from uh, survivals of breast cancer is cardiovascular disease from chemotherapy and other causes. So how do, how do we assess patients? We are very traditional how we assess patients. We look at biomarkers that we feel comfortable with and we would thought that that's what we should do. Cholesterol, blood pressure, age, sex, smoking and obesity. We do a physical examination to the patient, but we focus our examination on the heart. We listen to the heart, we listen to the patient, and we do an electrocardiogram and we do cardiac imaging, whether echo or CT or angiogram. And we took a step forward and do biomarkers for inflammation and genetic testing, but they all focus on the heart. And we need to widen our horizon and said, are there any messages that the patient give us that are not related specifically to this organ. So, in the past, when we have a problem, unmet need from the patient, we have the unmet need and we seek technology to help us. However, as you well know, there is an exponential increase in technologies. And currently, there is a mashup of a lot of technology that are not necessarily I'm looking for a solution, but the technology looking for application that help us uh, address our unmet need. It's not a new concept. This is called the Frank sign. Dr. Frank published it in the New England in 1973, and he discovered that the crest that you have in your ear is a predictor of coronary disease. Don't, don't try it now. Um, it's still controversial, 
but it gave us the first glimpse that uh, there is other signs of cardiovascular disease that are not related to the heart. And since then, with a the new technology, there are more technology that give us clue to what happened to specific disease. The voice, the uh, genetic and the face, genetic of the face, and even com companies that are looking at the blinking of the eyes as a predictor of disease. Today, we're going to focus on what we did in the cardiovascular department at Mayo with collaboration with Beyond Verbal on the, the role of the voice in cardiovascular disease. And I'll give the uh, microphone to my colleague. So in the spirit of listening to our body, what we are doing at Beyond Verbal is we are focusing just on the tone of voice we don't understand the meaning or the content on the context. We're just listening to the tone of voice of a speaker and trying to extract as many insights as possible from the tone of voice, giving us indications about our emotions, our well-being, and even uh, on our health, as we will see. The whole idea is that we can leverage the phenomena of what's going on now with the introduction of all the smart home devices, the Amazon Echo, the Google Home, the Apple HomePod, the progress that is happening with NLP. So now people are going back to use voice, which was the most useful mean of communication for millions of years. But now with the progress of, of NLP, this is coming back now to the front line. We are also leveraging other phenomena, one that is really a theme in this, uh, in this event, which is around digital health, which means that people are much more interested and open to understand what their health conditions in between doctor visits and not just come when something is, uh, is wrong. And the introduction of AI, which is really an amazing tool to take tons of, of data and we'll see how we are using it in order to extract a lot of uh, information. Um, on the concept level, what we are doing is we are collecting voice from variety of devices, mobile phones, smart home devices, IOTs, upload the voices to a secure cloud-based service. And there we are looking for these vocal biomarkers. This is the new concept, the novel concept, novel concept that we are talking about now. Looking for these vocal biomarkers in real time and over time. <coughs> and then once we identify some changes or abnormalities or these connections that we can make with specific health conditions, we can identify this and notify the user and the caregiver. With this approach in mind, we approached a Mayo Clinic to really look at the groundbreaking research that we wanted to do together. Thanks, Yuval. So we're interested to, as I said, we are fairly frustrated from the conventional risk factors or the remote that patient needs to come. So our question was that, is atherosclerosis process, the process of hardening of the artery and the creating uh, structural changes, is it associated with any, any change in the voice? Are we are in any relationship between any characteristic of the voice and the presence of coronary artery disease? So uh, this is the design of the study. So we have 150 patients that refer for coronary geography for detection of obstructive coronary disease. And they were actually blindly, we record them prior to the procedure. It was important for us to have a control group of healthy voluntary control, but also patients that refer to a procedure which is not a cardiac procedure, to ensure that we are specific for the cardiac procedure. The patient underwent coronary angiography, and blindly we sent the voice to beyond verbal, and then a statistician matched the result of the voice analysis and the degree of disease by coronary angiography. It's important to mention that when we collect the voice, we have three segments. One of them, the patient was reading a text. One of them, the patient was uh, reporting for 30 seconds on positive mood or positive experience. But most importantly, the patient had 30 seconds to share with us a negative experience, which goes back to some talk that we have about emotion. And then, as I said, we have the angiogram and we have the voice signal. Everything was blindly done. So what did we find? First of all, I, in the upper panel, I'll show you a sample of recording, which is this red, is from patients with coronary disease as proven by the gold standard of angiography. And the green show you the control. 
And you can see easily that there is a significant difference between them. And then we create an ROC and find out that the presence of this specific segment on the voice have a high specificity to detect or to recognize coronary disease. And uh, this one, when we did the statistic and odd ratio, it's 2.6-fold increase the likelihood of coronary disease if you have significant uh, changes in this segment, which is much more than we see if we collect samples of cholesterol and blood pressure and smoking. So we are very pleased to see that this result is actually give us an opportunity uh, to detect this presence of coronary disease. But it has further implication. If you can see on this slide, the upper one is coronary disease, and the, one, the second one is the patient that underwent procedure to relieve the obstruction of the coronary disease. And you can see in some patients we see a changes in the signal after they underwent therapy. And it's very similar to the bottom one, which is healthy. So this technology can not only help us to detect, but also to follow up the patient in long term for specific patient. Uh, so we conclude that there is a relationship between a voice and characteristic of coronary disease. We did not find correlation with the significance of the disease. And the voice analysis holds the potential to assist physicians in estimating the pretest probability of coronary disease among patients presenting with chest pain or patients that can record it from the outside. We're currently doing a follow-up, especially in the setting of telemedicine when clinical health care is provided in from a distance. So with this uh, collaboration, great collaboration between the world leading institutes like uh, Mayo Clinic and the industry in general and beyond verbal specifically, and we have now taken the whole concept of vocal biomarker to a variety of conditions now that uh, we've established and we believe that there is real substance behind this listening to our body concept. Uh, we have a great collaboration with the second largest HMO in Israel where we get access to 150,000 patients with different chronic disease, COPD, diabetes, cancer, uh, cardiovascular, of course, stroke, and so on. And we get the access to historical recordings, 10, 20, 30 per patient. So you can imagine how we can apply AI and big data analysis here while we continue with the small data clinical trial activities. For example, we are now extending the work with Mayo Clinic from coronary artery disease to congestive heart failure. We are replicating the same uh, research that we did with Mayo Clinic with a leading hospital in China in order to show that this is a true biomarker, which is language independent. So if we can show that it's working in English, in Chinese, in Hebrew, in Russian, and so on, this is where the breakthrough is. We are moving also to neurological conditions and even to well-being with uh, working with the uh, scripts out of San Diego and with the MDS uh, Institute in, uh, in the UK. So to summarize, we envision a world where health conditions and well-being and our emotions can be continuously monitored just using our voice. And the motivation to use the voice is really because it's something that we use all the time. We can collect it passively, non-intrusively, and in a very cost-effective way on the way to preventative and personalize the medicine. And I guess the, the way I kind of like to describe it, especially to, to people in, in Israel, is that this is like your Jewish mother that is hovering over here all the time, <laughs> listening to your voice, and just by hearing your voice can tell you you're not feeling well, what's going on with you, she's not good enough for you, and, and so on. <laughs> so that's the kind of technology that we are focused on. Thanks for your attention. Um, will be also available in the Innovation Lab for any follow-up uh, questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Yuval.